Hey everybody, it's Safia Marco. Dish out on movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to review Speak No Evil 2024. So as you guys know, I reviewed the original movie a couple of days ago. And I think it's probably good that I watched the original first because honestly, if I saw the remake first, I would have had assumptions about the original that would have been unfair to have. The original is basically, the whole movie has this theme of, you know, the danger of being too polite and not recognizing red flags and not... uh getting yourself out of a bad situation. Whereas the American remake is really all about being a man. <laughs> I mean, that really, <laughs> that really is the movie. It really, it's, it, 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 you could have changed the title from speak no evil to how to be a man. <laughs> Because that's the entire movie. It, <laughs> that's like the whole theme of the movie. It's so weird. There's so many weird changes that they made. And honestly, I'm not gonna I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I actually enjoyed it. I thought that honestly the second half is better than the first movie's second half for obvious reasons. But the original movie's first half is a lot better than the remake's first half. Uh, there's a lot of... I would say, like, in general, because I'm going to do spoilers. I'm just going to do a general non-spoiler review before I get to the spoiler discussion. So that I can really break down properly why certain things were trash in comparison to the original and vice versa. But... In general, I thought that this was a fun movie. I I really feel like it was a good choice to release it like in September. It's like a good bridge movie between like the summer and the fall season. And, you know, it it definitely reminds me a lot more of Straw Dogs too than even the original. And that's something that's kind of weird to me is that like the original, although it it reminds you of Straw Dogs. It doesn't completely remind you because obviously in Straw Dogs, you know, shit happens and there's like all this home invasion stuff too in the second half. But like in the original Speak No Evil, it's just a lot more like subtle. It's a lot more creepy. And the characters, you know, they never fight back the entire movie. They never... <laughs> That's the whole point of the movie, you know, is that they're just these pushover characters, which, you know, there's issues with that movie. There's a lot of issues. But what I'm saying is, like, this remake leaned in a lot more on the Straw Dogs referencing and the Straw Dogs, like, uh, comparisons in general. And I think that this remake also dumbed down a lot of things. It dumbed down a lot of intense moments. It dumbed down the theme of the movie to the point of where there's this famous line in the original movie where they're like, why are you doing this to us? You know, that typical cliche line that <laughs> you always hear in every single horror movie. Why are you doing this? Please let me go. You don't have to do this. You know, one of those three things. And, well, the bad guy in the original says, because you let us. And that, ugh. You know, it's so gross. It's so creepy and just, ugh. Uh, well, in this movie, they say that same line, and they try to they try to hit some of the same beats of the original, and pretty much all of them are a failure. You know, all of them are... Not because because they don't try to push it too far. They don't go far enough and they don't really, you, you know, it seems like it's also because it's an American movie that it's a little more safe. It's a little more inoffensive. 
And instead, the whole movie, and I'm not spoiling anything, by the way. I mean, you've already been spoiled about the whole movie if you saw the trailer, uh, which I don't know how you couldn't see the trailer. Like, I'm pretty sure that more people know about the Speak No Evil trailer than they do about the American election of 2024, (laughs) because, like, (laughs) the trailer is, like, everywhere, or it was everywhere, and thank God it's not going to be anywhere now, uh, and from now on, I should say. But they turn the whole movie from being about, like, politeness and, uh, you know, getting out of bad situations when you realize that, like, okay, this is wrong. They turn that entire thing around to gender, basically, and, like, it's all about how James McElmoy's character, he's a toxic man, and he's, you know, I'm not going to, because James McAvoy did say that Andrew Tate wasn't the inspiration for the character, but he said he was inspired by him a little bit, I guess. Uh, which, you know, you, you can be inspired by anyone when you play characters, you know, like, uh, but like, yeah. That's what the movie is basically turned into. It's kind of like a feminist, like, straw dogs, like a modern feminist straw dogs a little bit, because, like, yeah, I won't get into the spoilers, but, like, it's just very apparent the entire movie, this, like, uh, this theme of, like, evil men and, like, what it's what it means to be a bad man versus a good man, and then obviously... The, the evil family, they have this son, aunt, and, you know, what kind of man is he going to grow up to be because of this situation and stuff like... So I really felt like that's the biggest flaw with this movie, uh, non-spoiler terms, uh, is that everything has been dumbed down and changed into a gender thing and a thing about, like... Uh, for instance, like, the main couple, they're having marriage problems. And that's, like, a typical thing we see in every single fucking modern movie. Uh, you see a single mother, or you see a couple, and they're gonna get divorced because, uh, yeah, that's just how it is now. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm sick and tired of it. They didn't need to do that for this movie. The couple in the original movie was not gonna get divorced at all. Because both of them were dimwits. Uh, <laughs> the, the wife was no, was no less of a dimwit than the husband. You know, she was, she was just as bad. I mean, she had a couple of moments where uh, she was like, Oh, no, oh, I don't think we should do that. Or like, uh-oh, we gotta go. But like, <laughs> she was still just as bad as him. And in this movie, it's not like that. The wife, the entire movie, she is just consistently, like, uh, resistant about everything. To the point of where that message that the original movie had completely gets lost. I will say that there were a lot of improvements over the original movie, and I felt like All the stuff that I wanted to happen in the second half of the original movie happens in this movie. (laughs) So it's kind of like if you combine the first half of the original movie with the second half of this movie, you would probably have what I would consider to be like a four out of five movie experience. The problem is is that the first half of this remake movie is kind of bad. Uh, Well, it's not really bad, but it's just bad compared to the original, and also it's it's got the uh, agenda agenda stuff going on, which the agenda stuff isn't too bad. It's just noticeable because I just got done watching the original movie where they didn't have any of that, and where you know the there was nothing about that in the original movie. You know, I mean the original movie. It was more it was so much creepier. It was so much more subtle. And I think that the that the the best thing that the remake has going for it is James McAvoy. Uh he is the best. I love seeing him in movies. You know, like honestly, I probably wouldn't have been as interested in this movie if not for him, which is like a consistent thing with him. 
like, was split. Like, I wanted to see that because of him. And then, you know, X-Men First Class and such. Like, anything that he's in, I'll be more interested in watching because he's such a fantastic actor. He's so likable. Oh, God, there was that one stupid kidnapping movie where he's like this dad whose kid gets kidnapped and he's got to track him track down the kidnapper and the movie didn't even have a script on purpose. I watched I suffered through that movie. Uh, you know like cuz I just wanted to see him and like yeah, like he really makes this movie. I mean when you when you pay however much money you pay to see this movie, you're basically just paying to see him. <laughs> he's the greatest. And he does such a good job. Now, I will, I will say that with a caveat, because he's one of those people that you love to hate. He's, he's someone who... He, he wasn't as scary to me in this movie as he was in Split. I guess because Split wasn't really as dumbed down. It was a lot scarier and more realistic, which I know I make fun of movies trying to be realistic. But, like, yeah. But I think the thing with the original Speak No Evil is that the the villain, uh, Patrick, or one of the villains, (laughs) he comes across as a real-life evil person. And because I haven't really seen that actor in the original movie anywhere, because he's in (laughs) foreign movies probably for the most part, I'm not. I'm a lot more scared of him than I am of James McAvoy, uh, who you know I know that he's a, probably a, a good person in real life, and he's just playing pretend like. So it kind of feels a little bit less scary to me. Uh, but still, like he makes the movie, and I would totally recommend anyone to watch this movie. You know, probably it, you don't have to go to the theater to see it. Wait for it to come out on a streaming service because I guarantee that when this movie comes out on like Amazon Prime, Hulu, I guarantee everyone's going to watch it and I guarantee it's going to be like at the top of the streaming, like the the most popular movies in the same way that Ford v. Ferrari is, you know, and in 2019, that movie got like no attention at the Oscars and every time that it's on a streaming service, everyone watches it. And it's always, like, at the top of the list of, like, recommendations and the popular movies. I'd also like to say, too, that uh, I I really like the other actors in this movie, such as I really like the kids. I thought that both kids did a really good job. And uh, I just, I thought that it that all that stuff with the kids was handled so much better than the original movie. I also really liked the wife of the bad guy. Uh, she, she was really hot, honestly. Like, I thought that she was Shailene Woodley or something, because she kind of looks a little bit like Shailene Woodley. But I looked her up on Letterboxd, and apparently she hasn't really been in anything else that I've seen She's kind of like a newer up-and-comer, and And so I really liked her. She did this thing the entire movie where, like, people would do something that would, like, that was wrong, and she would make this face like, oh, whoopsie, oh no. Like, she would make this, like, really, like, cringeworthy face like, oh no. (laughs) You know, like, uh, oh, my daughter cut herself and there's blood everywhere. Uh, oh, no. Ouchie. You know, it's like, and I thought that that was really hilarious because it was like, it, it was so fake that it was creepy. It was so fake that, like, it, you know, you could feel the, uh, what was going on underneath that, you know. And so I thought she did a good job, too. And uh, I, I thought that the main couple was fine. It's just that they played such modern characters that I really didn't like them. Uh, I mean, honestly, I almost didn't like them even more than the couple from the original movie. Because at least the couple in the original movie... Well, actually, no. Because the the couple in the remake, I mean, they... They don't... uh, They're not pushovers like the 
Well, they kind of are. I don't, I don't know, but like, yeah, enough comparisons. I, I would recommend this movie in general. It's a solid thriller. It's a solid movie. It's the type of movie that you would get from Blockbuster on a Friday night and along with the two other movies, and then you really enjoy this one and, you know, take it back on Monday or whatever. Or Redbox. Uh, uh Uh-oh, Redbox is gone. But, like, yeah, when Redbox was a thing, this movie would have been, like, the perfect Redbox rental. Uh, But it it is a little bit better than that, you know. I mean, I, I, I hope I'm not... Uh, downselling it or or underselling it, not downselling it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was that downselling. You know, let's see. Another thing that I really liked about the movie, and this is just a small detail, I liked how the main daughter had anxiety, and I liked how that kind of played a role in the movie because it really felt like it that was like a good attempt to make the movie a little bit scarier. That was one of the more effective things because there's a decision that's made. I'm not going to give it away, uh, even though you've already seen the trailer, which, you know, gives the whole movie away. Uh, but there's a decision that's made in the, in the middle of the original movie. And it's so infuriating that it just, it, Oh my god, like when that happened, I was like ready to explode because it was so irritating. Like, what the fuck are you fucking doing, you idiots? Like, that was basically me the whole movie. And so that's another reason why I give this movie more credit uh, is because even though it feels like it has those agendas going on, the main wife, you know, the girl boss wife, she speaks for me (laughs) she speaks for the audience man like in the original movie she said every single thing basically that i would have wanted to say like she was like you know oh no fuck you (laughs) fuck you james mcaboy uh (laughs) you know she was like the opposite of uh the original character (sighs) so yeah In terms of food, funnily enough, and this happens a lot too, funnily enough, I was watching a a review of this movie the other day uh, because I really like a certain review channel, and even if I'm planning on watching a movie, I'll watch their review to see what they think just for fun. Uh, Sometimes I'll watch them to see if they agree with what I said, which it's funny because they gave Beetlejuice like a mediocre review, but uh, Beetlejuice too. But they said every single thing that I said in my video, basically, and I thought that was funny. And then, yeah, they, they they've done that a lot though. They it seems like they agree with me on almost every movie that I review. Anyways, I was watching their review of this movie. And while I was doing that, I was eating jar spaghetti. And I think that that's the perfect grade for this movie. And by the way, I'm probably going to do a little bit uh, of work doing this review because I'm filming a sequence tomorrow for my movie. And I had to make paper mache masks for the sequence. And I forgot to make one of them. And so I am having to make an extra one right now, and, you know, I'm going to be heading over there early, so I really don't have time tomorrow morning to do it, so I apologize if you guys hear me getting up and there's a couple of moments of silence. It's it's because I, I got to finish this effing mask, you know, so. Uh, but I was having jar spaghetti, and to me, like, this movie is the perfect jar spaghetti movie because when I think about jar spaghetti... It's not the real thing. It's not as good as like homemade spaghetti with meat sauce, etc. But it's still pretty good. It's decent. It's solid. It's something that, you know, I could have once in a while. Uh, you know, I, I jar spaghetti can be really good sometimes too. Earlier in the summer when I was going through a miserable experience... 
I took some jar spaghetti and I put a little tiny bit of ground beef in the spaghetti. Just a probably like a fourth of a patty of like, you know, one of those pre-shaped patties. And it was so good. It was probably like some of the best spaghetti I've ever had, but it's still not as good as the real spaghetti. And I feel like that's kind of what this movie is, is that it's like you're, you know, it's it's definitely the American version of Speak No Evil. But I think it's it's a good thing. I think that I'll never watch the original movie again. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of great moments, it, really, really good acting in the original movie to where it felt real and it felt very, very uncomfortable and sick and disgusting. Uh, but this movie is so much more satisfying and it does everything that I would have done personally as a filmmaker, honestly. And that I never say that, but like, yeah, totally. Like the second half of this movie really makes up for the original movie, which was a uh, yeah, that was a <laughs> and I watched that movie right before I went to bed too, and I'm surprised I didn't have any nightmare. So, anyways, there we go. Spider-Man. In the original movie, Ant, the the child of the evil family, he doesn't really attempt to talk about what's going on. He doesn't really attempt to communicate. And I thought that that was kind of unrealistic. I thought that that was a little uh, wonky. And he not only attempts to communicate in this movie, in the remake... But he full on like walks the family through what's going on and he does all these little smart things that you would see someone do in like a thriller and he completely steals the show almost. And uh, I really loved his character. I really, because that's what I thought in the original movie, there's this part where they drive away and it's so sad and it's so... Like, because they're trying to leave, you know, they're trying to escape. And and uh, Abel, that's the son in the original movie, he's making this sad face and he's, he's putting his hand on the window and they don't understand, of course, because they don't know what's going on there. And uh, it's so, so uh, sad. And you're hoping, like, please go back and help this kid, you know? Like, please don't let him suffer with this horrible, horrible, uh, family. And in this movie, that's what happens, you know? I mean, that's what it feels like. It feels like they go back and they help him, and, uh, I really, really liked that a lot. I loved how things turned out in the second half. The only thing that I didn't like about the second half was that in the original movie, the babysitter guy is also one of the bad guys. He's this Indian guy. And, well, in the remake, and this is another thing I didn't mention in my non-spoiler review, but, you know, they're kind of implying, at least to me, that the James McAloy character is like a a Trump supporter type of character. Like, the, the whole family, you know, it's like a mid Midwestern Trump-supporting family. But that's the weird thing is that this takes place in England in the on the English countryside. So you know it's like it's kind of weird to like use an, use a an English family to you know make Trump comparisons. And that's just my takeaway of what they were trying to do. I I'm not saying that's what they actually meant to do. Uh but basically because they were doing that they could not have the babysitter in the remake be one of the bad guys. And the reason is, is because the, the babysitter in the remake is also, like, he's Syrian. And so James McAdoy, uh, McAdoy? James McAdoy, he makes this comment of, like, if the babysitter does anything funny with the kids, then uh, we can just have them deported you know, so it's like, see, that's what I mean. That's why I thought it really felt like they were doing, like, a Trump thing uh, with the, these characters. 
But yeah. Let's see, what else as I'm painting? <sighs> yes. The husband is also a cuck. They have this whole storyline uh, to get into more detail of what was going on with the main couple. A couple of years ago, the the wife cheated on the main guy. And he just can't get over it. And so it's like, are they going to get divorced? Are they not? And I felt like that was honestly like... You could have had them be unhappy, but the fact that she had to cheat on him is, like, what really takes it over the edge. Because it just feels so, like, yeah, this is such a modern thing. Like, this is such a modern movie character, this cuck husband who, uh, you know, his, his girl boss wife, she goes around cheating. And, of course, her excuse is, like, she was unhappy and everything and yeah <laughs> there were a couple of moments too where i liked how they twisted things around from the original like in particular there was this part where when they returned to the house because they were looking for the little girl's bunny rabbit i really liked how uh the wife the evil wife she made up this excuse for why she was having the children sleep in bed with her and her husband. And also, I want to bring that up because they totally ruined that. In the original movie, the the kids are not happy, or, or at least the daughter, and she's asking to get into the room with the parents, but the parents are having sex. And so the mom is like, no, fuck you, you know, I need to have sex now. <laughs> it's like, it's a really weird thing. It's like, they're so, they're such pushovers in the original movie, but then it's like, when they needed to have sex in that one scene, they're like, yes, we need to sex now. <laughs> and uh, so what happens is, then in the window, there's like a window or something to the out, in the hallway, uh, the evil guy, uh, Patrick, He's standing there, he's naked, and he glares and stares right at them. It's so creepy and disgusting. Uh, well, he takes the daughter and his son, and he puts them in bed with them. And he's naked. He's fully naked. He's butt-ass naked. Uh, well, in the remake, they're just sleeping with them for some random reason. And James McAvoy is not fully naked like in the original. Uh, also, and they change it. And, but I did like this because it felt like an interesting excuse. The evil wife. And I'm sorry, I, I can't remember their names. I think it was Kira uh, or Kira or Kyra. I can't remember. But she's like... I lost a child. I lost a baby this one time and it was really hard for me and so I'm really overprotective and I thought, you know, that was a good little twist on things. I mean, I wasn't expecting that and so I thought that that was nice. Let's see, what else? I wrote all these notes. Oh, here's a big thing that I thought was a big fuck up, okay? Okay. In the original movie, Ant's room, or Abel, the child's room, it, it's a normal-looking room, you know? It's it's very typical. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's not like a horror movie room or anything. But in the remake, the child's room is... <laughs> it looks like a, a room out of a horror movie. You know, it's just... It's, it's this shitty looking like attic style room and it's it's ugly and there's no decoration or toys and it just it, that was such a stupid choice because like it was so much creepier in the original how it was a normal looking room and with the little tiny bed next to it because like it just felt again very americanized very dumbed down because, like, I, I'm going to bring real life into this because I feel like the filmmakers, they should have realized this uh, when they were making it. 
there was this case that happened that I, I, I'm so shocked. Nobody even talks about this case. Uh, there was this guy named Jesse, I think it was McFadden. I can't remember, but like it was in this town. I can't even remember what state it's in. It's a uh, Henrietta is the name of the town. And him and his wife and, uh, he had like kids and everything. He was like a convicted sex offender and him and his wife were, uh, making, uh, sex tapes with children and probably killing tons of children and, uh, pimping them out to people in town and shit. And, uh, eventually what happened was this really weird, like massacre where, uh, these two girls stayed over at their house and they were, they had already stayed over there before. Oh God, I can't even think about that case. It's so disgusting. It's so bad. It is probably one of the worst cases I've ever studied. And I've studied a lot of true crime cases and I'm just shocked. No one talks about this case at all. And it's a thing where like, there's totally a cover up going on, but that's beside the point. <laughs> that's beside the point. But like, they showed all these videos and pictures of the inside of the house. And, you know, the kids, they had these normal looking rooms. But here's where it got interesting. They would have chains to the floor. And they had uh, hooks on the walls to where there were restraints. So, you know, the, the children could be, uh, assaulted on their beds and everything. And so like, that's how you make a creepy setting for a horror movie. You don't make it a creepy horror movie room. Like it's the ring or it, it even look, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Harry Potter, you know, where Harry Potter's living under the stairs, <laughs> Like, that's what it reminded me of, like, this fucking room that they gave the little boy. It was such a stupid decision. It was probably the dumbest decision that they made of the, the whole movie. I would also say, again, it wasn't as subtle as the original. Uh, and I think I already said that before, but there was this one scene... Is, is the paint's drying. Uh, I, I'll probably get this done and I'll finish the painting after. Uh, there was this one scene in the original where the daughter wanted to slide and the, the little boy wouldn't move out of the way. And so the mom goes and gets the Patrick, the evil guy, to go move his son out of the way. And in the original, it is so scary and it is so hard to watch because there's like a suspenseful feeling of like the mom is unknowingly alerting this abuser to go uh, abuse his, his child. And in the remake, uh, James McAvoy's character, he's already following the mom over to see what's going on. So it's a thing where like, there wasn't any suspense or anticipation because it was ruined by him just immediately going over there without any provoking, you know, or provocation. Is that, how, is that what you would say? Yeah. It also didn't really feel as warranted when they left the first time. I mean, the whole incident with the sleeping in the same bed as the other kid, I mean, I told you that that was kind of ruined. You know, the whole thing with that, it just it was not the same as the original movie, but, like, it was that was really random. And so the, the people who reviewed this movie, their review that I watched, they said that they kind of got the vibes that there was, like, a sexual aspect and that James Macca Moy's character was, like, a pedophile. And I guess you could get that impression because there was no reasoning of why... The kids were sleeping in the bed with them, and uh, there still wasn't any given, even at the end of the movie, after the whole fighting and the Straw Dogs rip-off stuff. Uh, so that was just, that whole thing was just, the first half was really mishandled, I think. And I would also say, 
I would totally agree with people who didn't want to see the movie because everything was shown in the trailer. Because they really, they really did show everything in the trailer. I mean, they, the movie is a slow burn, just like the original movie. But it, it just, they really ruined it by showing uh, too much in the trailer. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Please like, comment, and tell me what you thought of this movie. Uh, do you agree about my comparisons to the original? And then also, please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest movie reviews. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.